back to SG Classics. It's uh, Monday morning and all my plans have gone out the window. Um, the plan was, if you watch the Scarlet video, you'll know I've been working on Scarlet last week. This week it's Nora. I was going to spend all week getting Nora done because <clears throat> I was hoping to get it, first of all, I was hoping to get it to the rolling road and then get it all, all the bits and pieces finished off. I spoke to Mike at Mechanics, who does all my carburetor tuning, has done for years, and he's moving workshops, so he said it's possibly going to be mid-November. I've spoke to daily owner of Nora, and he's quite happy with that. He would have liked it back before, but he understands it's got to be tuned, he wants it right. He wants to just pick it up, turn the key, and drive it home. Job done. So, in order for that to happen, although it runs quite good now, it does need tuning. So... <clears throat> Um, my plan is now, or it was, was to get everything finished off. I've done the paintwork on it, it just needs some flatten and buffing. Um, reassemble all the nose cone, get that on, stripe the car, and then it's just snagging, you know, daft jobs, the final 10%, big push to get it done. And that was the plan for this week until my son messaged me. Saturday night, but I didn't get it till Sunday morning, the message, uh, to tell me his car broke down, desperately needs it fixing. So I'll show you what that is. So this is what I should be working on. You know, what I normally do. Classic Ford, get Nora out of the way this week, get all the paintwork finished off, you know, flat buff, striped, reassembled, nose cone, just all the jobs, the little loose ends tied up, get it finished get it MOT'd and then I can store it until there's a slot available at the rolling road. So then once that's finished, I can get on with these two long-term projects, which have been sat in the background. The XR2, I've already done some content on previous videos. The Capri, I've never done any content on, but I really need to crack on and get them two done because both the owners want their cars, obviously. So apologies to Jason who owns the Capri and Neil who owns the XR2. I promise I will be back on them two cars soon. Um, this is my problem. So uh, my son, 19 year old, uh, put a comrade through the block on his 1.25 Fiesta. So being the good dad that I am, I've now got to put an engine in this one. Yay! Joys of being a dad. They never grow up, do they? Apparently he was doing the speed limit when uh, when he put a comrade through the block. So now, sadly, Nora's going to have to put on, be put on hold for a day or two while I swap an engine. I'm yet to find that engine, which is going to need a service and a cam belt as well, on the Fiesta that is. So, all the best laid plans go out the window. This is why I actually stopped making plans, because I, mean, I planned everything for this week, how it was going to go down, how everything was going to get done, and video, and... Da, 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 da. And then when my gimbal wakes up, come on. That's the spanner that was dropped in the works. Woo, there we go. Yep, as you can see, a nice oil patch underneath it because it's got no comrade. It's got a number three comrade delete kit. So, yeah, that's Monday's job. Wish me luck. I'm not going to video it because who in the world wants to watch a video on an engine swap on a 2015 Fiesta? I'm pretty sure nobody who watches my videos wants to see it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to do it either. But he's my son, needs most, just got to crack on and get it done. So sadly, Nora is on hold for a little bit. I died to get it finished. I want to see it all striped up and outside done. But hey ho. It is what it is, just got to crack on and get on with it. So, finally, time to crack on with Nora. I got that Fiesta out of the way, engine, got a second hand engine in the Fiesta, cam belt, water pump, plugs, oil filter, got it all back in, cleared all the codes on it, all done, gone back to me son, he's happy. So now I can crack on with Nora. Well, I've already started, I've buffed the wing, that's come out okay. So, show you the nose cone, what I'm doing next. on it yet. Um, next job is flat, uh, I've already flatted 
dashed it off with some 1500, just a quick one over with 1500 to get any uh, dust out of it. And then 2000 all over. I'll get me a little three inch buffer, which is ideal for these tin bits. And uh, start off with some heavy compound and then go with some extra fine compound. Um, I'm still toying. I don't know what to do. I could fit the nose cone and paint the cowls and hope that they match up because this is, although it's supposed to be satin, it's got quite a bit of gloss to it. Um, I'm trying to match that with the cowls. And another thing that's bugging me is it's got two holes in the bumper part. And I know it's not here for that, but it's, bo it's really bothering me because they shouldn't be there. It must have had some spotlights or something back in the day. So I'm toying with the idea of just getting some fibre fill, filling these in. I know eventually it probably will crack because this is like a rubberized plastic and nothing ever. I don't think you can even plastic weld these. They're a funny old material. So, yeah, I don't know what to do. I really haven't got the time. It's not part of the job, but everything inside of me is just saying do it. We'll see. Anyway, for the time being, I'm going to flatten... Uh, keep saying flat. I've already flattered all this. I'm going to buff it all up, get this nice and shiny, and then I may scotch this down and this and do these repairs. Don't know. Toying with it. We'll see. I'll show you what it's like when it's buffed up anyway. So we've got a wing flat and buffed. Looking better. And the nose going flat and buffed. Just no more big paint chip smack bang in the middle. We'll do next job. Prep all this black, scratch it down, scratch the bumper, and fill these holes in because, yes, it got the better of me. I'm just going to do it. Get some fiberglass, clean up the back of it, get some fiberglass on there. Uh, yeah, fill them, smooth them, prime them, paint them. You know the deal. <clears throat> and the headlight cowls have not got any paint on at all. They are just burnt plastic, so I'm going to prep them, plastic prime, and then paint them in the same black as the grill and the bumper, or the fake grill, because it's not actually open. Uh, do them in satin black. So, and then the nose will go on, finally, and I can get the car striped up, and all will be well in the world. It's looking all right. Anyway, next job. So we got some fiberglass in there. What do we got me? Uh, do, 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 do. I can't even remember. Me little three inch prep tool. Took it right back to the plastic, just around there, and same on this side. Then got some 320s and buzzed it out so it's not just a big dip where I'm repairing, trying to get a load of paint off. Uh, on the back again, got like a me little, I think it's like a 30 mil disc. Like a 40, 40 grit disc on the back and just did like the surrounding area on the back of it so it's nice and keyed up for the fiberglass to stick to try to push it through the hole as well and then on this side feather it out so it's clinging both sides so hopefully it will last you know i've done my best but yeah buzzed it back down took the top off this side i'm just going to give it some skiver filler now and then block that primer and paint all being well I'll uh, show you the finished product because I don't want to. Don't think you want to see me sanding filler because uh, it's about as boring for you as it is for me. So we've got all the filler, prime filler, sand it down, and then a nice thick coat of high build primer. So no more holes. I'll give that a couple of days to really cure and shrink and uh, guide coat it, block it, and get it in black. Not really much exciting to see, but uh, another job. Ticked off, well, sort of ticked off. It bothered me since the day I seen the car, so just had to be done. I'm a little bit confused by this bend in the nose cone though. I'm guessing it's been fitted wrong in the past or something. 
maybe when it tightens up to the bumper bar when I straighten out, we shall see. So that's it for today. Right then, finally back to Nora. It's been a didn't last time I filmed anything. I've got the uh, the bumper filled, two holes in the front, and in Hybo Primer and Guide Coat. Well, anyway, finally got back to it. Been busy with other stuff, so it's been probably a week or so since I touched it. Uh, blocked all the guide coat down, uh, and this keeps up. There we go. So all the guide coat blocked down. Nice and smooth, no more holes in the front. Got it all uh, cleaned up, dried, scotched this area, mashed everything off again, and did it all in satin black. So, because before it was really shiny, now it's just got a little bit of shine to it, just enough. Nice and neat, it's much better, and no holes in the front. So, next job is while the nose cones off, I'm going to fit four badge, fit the new uh, dealer plate to the front, um, fit the brackets in the side to mount it to the wings. Uh, and also, I've got to paint. Oh, what's going on with me? Oh, me. So I'm going to fit. Hang on. Yeah, don't know what's going on here. Here we go, we're back again. The uh, gimbal was having a fit and started working vertically instead of horizontally, so I don't know if that's gonna mess that part of the video up. We'll see when I come to edit it. Anyway, yeah. These are part of the reason why I repainted the bumper and the grill area, because, as you can see, these have never been painted. So, I think I mentioned it before, the bumper, area the grill area had been painted and was quite glossy so then i would have had to paint these well prep them plastic prime and paint them and hope that it matched up with this um now the satin black i use is this satin black which has got just a bit of sheen to it try and get it as close to looking like original plastic as possible whereas the satin black that was on this was really glossy it looked a bit too much so the chances of getting these to match this were slim to none hence why i painted all the black so next job is give these a good thorough clean up prep plastic prime and then paint these in satin black too and then i can get them fitted looking better got a nose cone and so Deal plate fitting for badge. Doesn't fit too bad actually. Gap's a little bit big on this side, but if anyone's ever fitted a nose cone before, they'll know you're, uh, you're basically limited with adjustment. Once you run out of a uh, give, and that's it, you can't go anymore. Just look a touch high. One on this corner, but the wing's good. Even though it's good, so I'm not sure if it's just the nose cone deformed or try to adjust it the best I can. Oh, it's not too bad. My car that's had wings and stuff. Lots of welding on the front end. I don't think it's too bad at all. Just the uh, headlight cowls to prep plastic prime paint and get them on. And that's, that's the front end done, finally. Quite impressed with it, it's looking good. Next will be the stripes. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad that. Sound black looks far better than before anyway, so yeah, quite pleased with that. I'll do the job. New job ticked off. Getting closer to the end now. So Saturday morning. So I'd come in and get the uh, the headlight cowls off, prepped, plastic primed, painted, and fitted. Uh, it wasn't here yesterday, it was at the NEC. Had a day off, I'm going to have a look at someone else's cars, which was nice. Um, anyway, back to this job at hand. Uh, all painted now, colour match is nice, look good. 
uh, but I've never actually had these cowls fitted since the car come to me and uh, the headlight backing plates were already fitted to the car the front panel was drilled it was fitted in the wrong side i.e the drivers was in the passengers passengers in the drive so I swapped them around but it was a, the front panel was already drilled so straight away noticing a problem now the headlight cowl isn't fitted properly there's no point fitting it properly because it's quite obvious the headlight back plate has been drilled in the wrong place it's down by about an inch and it's actually over to the wing probably uh, I guess I'd say about half an inch uh, driver's side is better well actually it's not a great deal better you know you get an idea drilled in the wrong place now hopefully there's enough just adjustment on the back plates to slide them up and correct it if not then it's going to be a trauma pulling the nose cone back off again to re-drill the front panel so what I'm going to do now is take some measurements jot down the measurements where each headlight has to go in relation to the, the cowl uh, for both sides and then hopefully I can adjust the back plates if not like I say it's going to be no going back off it's never straightforward close I just want to see if the front end finished I've never seen it with the front end complete since it come to me and yeah so it's going to be an eventful morning so I took some uh, measurements to get a rough idea of where the headlights need to go and it would appear I think this one's about 17 about 15 mil low side to side it's good the other side's not right side to side and different measurements again the problem I've got is you can see one screw there to fix the back and plate now thankfully it's got they're on slots and I can, can't see any of the slots so it means I've got plenty of room to go up there is another one which sadly is probably here so this headlight is going to have to come out uh, and then I don't know if you can see these ones no there's two back here too so the headlights are going to have to come out adjust the backing plates up put the headlights back in do my measurements again and uh, yeah it's going to be a lot of trial and error and I'm finishing work in about an hour so I don't know if we'll get this finished today oh well but this one is got to be done uh, like I say on this one, this one's a lot further out. You can actually see the headlights really close to the bottom here. Big gap up top. So this one's going to need a lot more adjustment. And it's actually, you can notice it's really close on this side. I think I measured about 10 mil difference side to side. So this one actually has to go 10 mil this way. So I don't know when we're going to have, because it's on sliders, and the sliders are for up and down, not side to side. So this one may have to be re-drilled. We'll see once I get the headlights out. So I mean, a nice simple job of fitting cowls turned into a bit of a drama. So that's what we're dealing with the headlights. Well, I'll show you. Do, do, do. I've popped the inner headlight out with the bracket. And then the outer headlights. I've just uh, undo the four mounts and just popped it out of the way there just so I can access the screws. And four screws on the body. So I don't know if you can see this little mark here. That was the original mark where it was. And I've undone the four mounts and screws, lifted this end up 15 mil. And this end has gone up 17 mil. So now, if my measurements were correct, they should fit. But we'll see. What I'm going to do now is screw the outer headlight back up with the four Phillips screws, uh, put the inner one back in, plug it in, mount that. I say with the four screws, I dropped one of the screws down there and it's gone in the nose cone. So don't do what Sam does. And it's probably resting about here now. So let's get a magnet and fish it out. Yeah. So uh, next job, get the headlights mounted back in and try to fit the grills again. There. Why do we keep calling them grills, cows? Hopefully, if my measurements were correct, it should fit. Fingers crossed. 
That's better. Step in the right direction. I can actually get the car one now. Rubber gasket's still missing off this one because um, it needs cleaning up. I think the outer headlight is perfect. I think the inner now is just probably a touch too high. So I'll probably pop them out again, pull this one down, say about five mil just to get it perfect. And that'll be that side done. A bit of a fiddly job, but it'll be worth it. It's nothing worse than seeing the headlights and they're all all over the place. So Nora finally has the full front end. The iconic RS2000 front end is finally complete. Mm, to a certain extent. I'll show you why. So the eagle eyed amongst you will notice no rubber ring around this headlight you have a rubber gasket you can just spot through here on four headlights <clears throat> now something i never spotted is these inner headlights headlights not headlights and not actually rs2000 because what they should be is quite deep like this say a 10 to 15 mil step which is what the rubber gasket pushes over whereas these are really flat so there's nothing for the gasket to stay on which I'm quite shocked I didn't actually spot this all the way through building this car, but I have now. So these are the rubber gaskets I'm talking about. <clears throat> As you can see, they're quite deep, so they're supposed to clip over the headlight. And there's your holes for your headlight adjusters, and there's sorry, two headlight adjusters, and then that's the fixing for holding the headlight into the backing plate. So they've not actually got anything to fit to because the headlights are quite flat with no lip on them. So unless we can source a pair of right hand driving the headlights for an RS2000, it's going to have to do without. But other than that, it's looking good. It's the first time I've seen it with a complete front end. I've spent lots of time adjusting headlight heights because um, the, they was both sitting really low. The, the passenger side seemed to be really, really low. Uh, so we adjusted that. There was also 10 mil towards the wing, which is no good. Couldn't even get the headlight cowls on. So that looks much better. And they all work. So finally, it's got its front end. And the next job is now is going to be some stripes. Woo, we love stripes. But without the stripes, it just looks like a replica. So I'm going to have to crack on and get it striped up. So my next challenge is stripes. Now, the problem I've got is the customer supplied a stripe kit with the car. Um, I'm used to using DMBs, which are already pre-cut, and the, uh, the backing is already preset to the height of the stripe, where it should be on the car. Well, sadly, this has come like this. I don't know where the kit's from. I've been uh, spoilt with DMBs, so what I'm having to do is go along with my ruler and put these marks all the way along. Now, I know they don't go right up to the swage line, but some people are saying they should be 15 to 17 mil, some are saying 12 to 14. Um, what I do know is the pinstripe goes off the top of this height. Now I've measured on this car and it's 16 mil. Now I have painted the black on because it was far too low. And I've gone with 16 mil, which was the height off the bottom of the boot lid. So now that's 16 mil. So I've gone with 16 mil here. So what I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to try something out on this straight kit, which I've never tried before, but one of my mates, Stee, I just know him as Stee lad. Again, can't remember his second name. He applies these wet so i'm going to give it a go um, i normally fit them dry but like i say the backings are already pre-cut to the height i need so you can set them and job's good i've never had a problem so on these because these these aren't cut i'm going to try out this wet application he basically said just put a mist of water on the panel Pull the backing off, fit it up, use a squeegee, run it along it once she's happy with the height, and it works. So I'm going to give it a go. 
worst case scenario, uh, wreck this strike kit, and then I'll have to buy a DMB kit, which at this point is probably the better option for me, but we'll give it a go. There's nothing lost, is there? So I'm just marking out 16 mil all the way along, cutting a bit bigger, and then we'll uh, get them on. And another thing, I don't think a later car should have these. Now I might be wrong, I always thought it was only broad stripe cars that had the RS2000 decal in the rear quarter. If someone would like to comment and prove me wrong, I just thought this was something people retrofitted back in the day because they seen the broad stripe cars with them. Again, I might be wrong, but uh, that's what I that's what I was always led to believe was correct. These shouldn't be on a later car with the pinstripes. Like I say, prove me wrong. So there we have it. Nora finally gets her stripes. That actually looks like an RS2000. It looks odd because I've seen it that many times without stripes. Now I'm looking at it with them. I just can't get used to it. It looks bizarre, but yeah, there we go. And the water trip worked. Well, instantly, I've been fitting these stripes for years dry and you get one attempt and you can't peel them back off and it's just a nightmare. I literally got a water bottle, sprayed some water on and you can pull them off and put them back on as many times as you want. Ta -da! That's one side down. I've got to do some alignment on the door on the passenger side because when the car comes to me, I add nuts and bolts instead of the uh, roll pins in the hinges. So someone had previously lined the door up with the nuts and bolts in. Now they obviously wasn't a tight fit, so when I replaced them with the proper roll pins, the door is now slightly out of alignment. So I need to tweak that. Once I'm happy with that, I can then go ahead and stripe the other side. Yeah, it's, uh, it's looking like an RS2000. Now again, do I put the RS2000 decal on the rear quarter? I've just read the uh, Sport and Escort book, which I refer to as the Bible. And they say it's only broad straight cars that have it on the, uh, on the rear quarter, which is something I was always told as well. Now I know everyone does fit them, so I'll probably I'll speak to the owner, see what he wants to do. I've got a feeling he's going to want to put the RS2000 decal on the quarter. And it's his car. When all said and done, it's not an original car. It shouldn't be black on the rear quarter. It shouldn't have alloys. It shouldn't have fishnets. The list goes on. Um, it's supposed to be a base model RS. So there's lots of differences from the factory spec. So he's making a car his own. And I'll speak to him tomorrow. It's a bit late now. It's probably... I think it's about 10 o'clock at night. I'll speak to him tomorrow, see what he wants to do about the decals on the rear quarter. If he wants them, I'll fit them. If not, it won't get them. And that's it. One side done. I really do hate fitting stripes. It's an awful job, but it's part of the job. So needs must. One side down, one to go. So that's it for this uh, update on Nora. Um, this coming Friday, the car's actually booked in at Mechanics, Mechanics in Congleton for tuning. Uh, so it'll be getting collected Friday morning by Mike at CRR Recovery. He's the only guy I trust to move cars. He's got some classic Fords himself, so he knows uh, how to look after them. So he'll be collecting the car Friday morning. He'll be getting loaded up, took to Congleton, tuned, and I'll be coming back Friday afternoon. All done. So then it'll be MOT last few jobs and get it back to the owner but what we're doing monday is big push to tighten up to finish off any loose ends you know make sure it's ready for the dyno all the levels tire pressures wheel talks all that stuff make sure it's safe to transport safe for the dyno and uh, get it fueled up but uh yeah that's it for this video i'll uh, i'll see you in the next one uh, please like subscribe share help the channel out help us grow 
han är, då får han inte in den här kredit 